all the way up there. That's better. I don't know why, but that thing really likes to reset the volume for some reason. Anyway, today is session 32, and we are going to hopefully finish some engine optimization that I've been working on over the weekend. Whether or not that happens, I don't know, but I don't think I have too much left. Famous last words. But we're going to try anyway. So, pretty much what I've been doing is the original entity class that I had, I've broken it up into a number of subclasses, or what they're usually called, I've broken them up into components. And then what I've done with those components is I've put them all into their own array, the uh, S stands for sparse, so they're, they're sparse arrays, sort of. <laughs> but the idea here is that by breaking up all of the components, or by breaking up the entity into all of their components, it will hopefully allow us to eventually get some interesting benefits by way of utilizing transformations on the data as opposed to transformations or as opposed to doing processing on classes and entities which probably isn't incredibly apparent how that's going to help but we will see so first thing is I actually don't need that variable there because I have another class to do that. And right, so here I don't need to add that part. Stream is going well, I say my stream is lagging behind dropping any frames. Maybe it's just the preview that I have that's thing weird. Setting quality. <laughs> my op my quality options are source. Uh go to auto. I don't actually need that to be on source, so that should be fine. Okay. Anyway. Um Area, we just add that, and then pretty much what I'm doing here is that. Actually, I don't need that because I did it right afterwards. Like here, add to area, should be fine. Oh, oops. Well, there's the problem. I say that. Um, do I add a color component here? Position area resources. Doesn't look like it. Nope. Maybe what I should do is check to make sure that I add all of the components that I actually need for each of these things. An issue that I've been running into for all of this stuff is that the some of the um, some of the entities that I've changed, namely all of them as of right now, have not been rendering, not rendered things for themselves the way that they're supposed to. So I'm trying to figure out why and then fix it. That's what I was doing over this weekend, but I didn't quite get there. So, we have a position. 
we don't have an input here because this is the generic mech, right, mech function. We do have physics. Um, we have the mech itself. Position input physics mech color. We need that. ID and uh, what did I call it? Color table or something like that? No. Is it entity color table? There we go. Okay. Entity color table, and that should be zero for Mac. Go. Render and mech render we don't need yet. We'll add those later. Because essentially the way this will work is instead of just attempting to render all entities every time we update things, instead we can we'll, we will only render the entities that have a renderable component. Which is let me jump down here real quick. It'll be not that one. <laughs> those two. The reason those are separate is because um, mechs have they have trails. <laughs> essentially, they will eventually have booster trails, and so they need a slightly different rendering call. Anyway, the reason we don't add them here is because when we create them, they won't they won't necessarily be in the area that the player is in, and so only the mechs and really any entities, only the entities that are in the same area as the player will be added to the render list. So they'll be the only ones that get rendered, which is what we want. So color, don't add renders, resource, we add resources. They can carry resources, but mechs have zero to start off. Um, I add a weapon later. I can probably edit here, but I'm as soon as I get done finishing with this stuff, I'm going to start go I'm going to go back to working on the mech designs details, and so I'll be I'll be doing all that stuff right after this. Um AI this is not this is a player, not AI, so we don't have to worry about that. Has an area, and we will add a camera later. So that should be good. I should probably go ahead and run through all of these and do the same sort of thing. So position, input, no, physics. Physics, mech. This is an asteroid. Um, color. They do need a color. So, entity color, asteroid ID, and we'll just pass in. We need to pass in the ID and then the color value, which will be entity, entity color table one. Have the color, no render, no mech rendered resources. We have that. No weapons, no AI. Uh, this does have an area. I'll have a specified area, so that's fine. And no camera. There we go. And then for projectile, again, we do the same sort of stuff. Position physics color that will be projectile ID entity color table two. Okay. So color, no render. Projectiles don't need resources, I'm here to that. No weapon, no AI, no. No, it does have an area. 
and a cam no camera. Okay. So that should be everything we need there. Uh, cannot convert argument to from initial initializer list to entity render. Well, why not? Probably because I just got rid of that. Okay. So technically, there we go. There we go. All right. So since I just changed this to a single variable, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And the entity render is just going to be an entity ID, which means we can just pass in the entity ID here. Likewise, we do the same thing here. There we go. And then, really, we can get rid of the brackets here. So, there we go. Add to area, add to area. So, Supposedly this should work. I don't think it's gonna work. So a bunch of other changes that we need to make. Like not having colors there. When we create a projectile. Why? Why do we set oh that's why we set that. We don't need to add a render. You know what? I think I just went through all of this and completely forgot about what I was just talking about. We don't need to add. We don't need to add a render component because that's what add to area is explicit. Well, I guess it's not explicitly for that. Um. Hmm. Yes, technically, it's not really what we want either. With render, and do something like that, and then we we'll get complaints down here because there's nothing called add to area. We do have add to area with render though, which it's good to be explicit. So I guess I'll leave that there. Now. Invalid return type for entity render. Entity render is an ID, so we don't have to do that. And that's probably going to be what most of these are. Right, so here we're going to do entity color. Like that. And then we'll just grab the color value. Sweet. Okay. Get that. There we go. We'll do the same thing down here. Okay, data entity color. Go. Sort of. Oh, right actually pull the color out of it. Okay. Everything rendered. Or everything compiled. Does it work? It doesn't look like it. Okay. Well. Yep, that looks about right. Alright, we get to Debug this some then. It's been my entire weekend. Physics body was null. Ow. How was that null? Um. Update player. 
Okay. The input. Input's just an ID. Where it should be. It's not. What I have is int input. You went eight. Okay. And that's just. Yes, yes, I know. All right, well, let's see. Toss an into the input with the input value. And really, okay, I'm going to have to change this slightly. Because into the input is going to actually need to have the ID and then the input ID. And that's just going to be whichever controller it's using. Or, I mean, I guess it could be, um, it could be an ID into a list of control types. So they could be controllers, they could be keyboards, they could be keyboard and mouse, they could be VR controls. I don't think I'm going to add VR controls. This doesn't, <laughs> doesn't really make sense as a game with VR. I guess you could. Anyway, that's not on the radar for now, so I don't have to worry about it. Not thinking about that. Anyway, you went eight for controls, and it will be called input ID, like I just typed out. Okay. Go, we get a bunch of other stuff because we need more than just one value. There we go. Simple enough. Now we can do that. Pull out the actual ID and then we need to do that in a couple of places. Oh. I found hiccups for some reason. Good job. Good job, me. What do I do? No global operator that I found for six type. Oh. <laughs> um. This is all from entity input. So I can. Ah. Well, apparently I wasn't thinking too much when I was writing that line of code. <laughs> I'm pulling out the iterator that has the input ID, and then instead of using the input ID, I'm pulling out from the same place, from the same array, I'm using the entity ID to pull out the exact same thing. That... Anyway. Yeah, clearly that was towards the end of the coding session. I hope. Grabbing all the IDs. Oh yeah, coding. It's pretty much entirely this. I figured a new, better way to do things. Sweet. Change all of your code. Damn it. All, all coding is. Hey, but it's, oh wow, okay. I was thinking it was gonna crash again. <gasps> can I, I can even move. Holy moly, whoa, what? Okay, well my control code is now no longer. Don't mind my control code, it's Max having a small seizure. It'll, it'll be okay. Sadly, the color of the warp points doesn't change. Why? Why? <laughs> I mean, that looks kind of cool. I, I would keep that as, effect, as an effect, actually. That's, that's pretty sweet. But that's not quite what we want. So 
I mean, it is nice. Change the color. Turn my boost on. Now that does the boost work? By I... the boost on. It doesn't look like it does. I I don't think I enabled that code yet. So anyway, I can bump into things, and I ideally the physics works. Hey, there we go. Okay. The physics works. That's good. Stop spinning. That's nice. Alright. So we're back to almost working. Not fully working, but almost working. So I'll, I'll take it for now. So first and foremost, um, what do we want to do? We need to fix... Fix the uncontrollable spinning is one. I find it weird that it does that all of a sudden, but I, mean, I, I don't know. I don't know, man. Let's see. Use all the control code for each game data entity with what? We grab the mech, because we're going to need to change things. Specifically, we're going to need to change the thrust. It's pretty much what it comes down to. Um, yep, set thrust to zero. Calculate the heat color way up here. And really... Now I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna leave that external because AI Max can use boost too, eventually, once we get it all working. Um we set the color based on the mech, do some stuff. So let's see if I just move around the wrong one. All right, one more time. Hit the right, right control this time. Okay. So that code seems to work fine. Nothing happens if we use boost, but that's okay. The actual movement code is is fine. Other than it being probably a little more than I want, but we can change that pretty. Change that right somewhere. Uh, position physics, Mac, in Mac. Here we go. Um, number of thrusters, boost time limit, um, max speed. Max speed? No. It's the booster values. It's these, right there. Okay, so as you can tell, we have this nifty little diagram here, which probably be spaced out a little bit. And five and six. And then one through four are all gonna be just a little bit slower than that. And by a little bit, I mean quite a lot, actually. But that's okay. So, that's good. Now, that's not what I want. That's not what I want either. I want to go to update player. All right. So, the rotation code is all done with facing. And we do all of that here, I think. Scales. Mm, no. Where do we do that? Ah, where did I put it? There's a function somewhere that I do all that. 
big player. Um, update draw mech thrust. Ah, go figure. Should look at the names. Okay, so here's where we figure out all of that stuff. And unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't know why it's so strange when I'm doing this. What would be going on here? I, mean, I guess the easiest thing to do would be to output I put the physics facing. Um we can do print f. We will say time. Um do three positions with one in front and then we have facing which is going to be loading points we'll do two and two like so and then we will pass in game input accumulator there we go. The accumulator, I have an AI accumulator. Nope, I need the physics accumulator. So, game input physics data dot accumulator. Except that's not going to work either. Alright, well, just because I want to check things. Um, set time to Zero time needs to be a float plus equals frame time time and then we will pass in physics facing dot x physics facing dot y there ha excellent. Now, if I point in a particular direction, so my physics facing doesn't change. You can see that from the timer going up, the value, the facing values aren't changing. Okay, so really the problem is just um, the problem is just our draw code. The control system values are not. Is this not damped enough? Hmm. And that's pretty easy to solve. We can just increase the damping. It's even worse. What have we done? All right. All right. We can instead go back. Oh. Go all the way back. Go back to the beginning. I'll just set. So now, if I push to the side, what should happen is exactly that. I should oscillate back and forth, which is what it looks like. And I just stay in that position. I stay in that pattern. Okay. So then, ideally, what you want to happen is you start incrementing. The damping. Whoa. 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 Why is the damping so high? Also, it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Interesting. Um, okay, if I do half that, will that work? Hmm. Doesn't look like it's really decreasing the oscillation. All right then. 
Now what do I do? What, I should say, what did I do? To be perfectly honest. Okay, where exactly do I, do I need the physics body here? Unfortunately. I'm applying torque here too, which is not really, not really what I should be doing in the draw. The thrust drawing function, to be honest. Um, that should be happening in the physics stuff. I may need to move that around eventually. This should feel like this should be doing one thing, and it's doing a number of things. I mean, really, really, it's just doing one call to draw things, and mostly this is an update function of sorts. It's not terrible, but it's not the greatest either. Because this stuff should be happening in... It should be happening in the physics update. And then this should be... That should be the only part that's in the update screen, honestly. Anyway, back to what I was doing. For the control system, um, let's see, is control dot each. I really need to get rid of that control.cpp file because it doesn't have anything in it. I changed all the functions to templates. So I can use, I can use them with multiple data types. But let's see, I'm using proportional derivative controller PV over here. The derivative is based on the process variable, which is this cross product, which should be fine unless the direction of the player is changing really. Well, so if this value is changing a lot, then the damping value would be doing would be doing some weird stuff is doing some weird stuff, so that's doesn't help too much. I don't happen to do... Okay, I don't use physics.tort for anything else, so that's okay. Um, maybe I'll just print out some information here. Torque is a floating point, so I'll do... Do three, I guess. Or we have direction player, and that'll be a couple of values. We have physics. No, we don't we don't need face or physics. We can just call it facing. Facing. We have torque which is the previous derivative value. So maybe we should just call that previous derivative value, to be perfectly honest, which sounds like a better idea. Um, that would be based off of the previous. So the cross product of The direction the player is currently facing and the direction the, that the player should be facing, it's a value from 1 to negative 1, with 1 being. Not, they're not aligned, but. No, sorry. Well, it does go from 1 to negative 1, but. When they are aligned, you end up with a value of zero. If they are opposite, you also get a value of zero, but that doesn't happen too often, so I'm not too worried about it. 
and it doesn't break anything. It just you it means you won't turn around immediately anyway. So it that value basically gives us a direction to torque the the mech. So this could be well camera, there we go. We will call that for now previous previous rotation. That was good. Alright, so that'll be three, and then we have a frame time, but I don't think that's a big deal at the moment. We're not really interested in that. So we have torque, we have direction player, we have physics dot facing dot x, physics dot facing dot y, and then physics dot torque, which is just a single value. So we should be able to do that. I think anyway. Woo! Format string 0.2f requires an argument of type double, but variadic argument 2 has type vector 2. Oh, okay. I see. That needs to be direction player x, and then we have direction player y. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now that we do that, I'll draw mech thrust for everything. I'm gonna get. That's not what I wanted. Well, that'll work. Have a bunch of extra values down here. Um, how about. This is slow, but that's okay. If torque is not zero, which may work. Well, the other value should be zero. No. Nah. Okay. Well, never mind then. All of those are floating point values, so we're not really going to be able to do anything like that. It'll work nicely. Um. If torque is greater than zero, or torque is less than zero, which I don't know if that's actually going to do any better. Nope. Well, we can do I don't know, point zero one. That seems reasonable. If it's greater than positive point zero one and less than negative. Basically what I'm trying to do here is get rid of everything other than the player. So, there we go. Now if I tap to the side using the correct stick, we should get a bunch of values. Okay. So, facing doesn't change. The direction of the player changes, which is what we expect. The torque should oscillate, which it does, sort of. And it does some weird jumps. 37, 36, 37, 39, 37, 39, 37, 37, 37. I don't know what that's all about. Oh, that's probably, that's probably the damping attempting, or the, yeah, the derivative value attempting to damping, dampen. The oscillation. There we go. All right. So, so why is the previous torque value, previous rotation value, really high? Oh, I see. Okay. Because it, yeah, that's the cross value. I, I got it now. Which, I mean, come to come to think of it, that's probably probably more useful than this. So we'll do rotation 
like so. And we'll just get rid of all of this. Direction player dot cross. We can go ahead and do the cross product again because I'm gonna cross this code anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay. If I push the direction, we start moving around. It's all fine and good. We have values that are similar. They are so similar, in fact, they're the same. It's mostly because they get set inside, so that should be okay. Um, I guess we could see what happens if we set that to zero. I don't think it's going to have much of a difference. I get values that are either one or negative one, nothing in between. I say that, I probably get stuff that's in between. Yeah, the window's just too small. Okay. So it slowly goes back and forth. If we put in a value of one for the damping, I feel like the issue here, let's see, value minus previous value divided by the, divided by the time, the delta time. Hmm. This shouldn't be too large. You end up with a small numerator, which would decrease the value, decrease the size. And the delta time is probably going to be pretty small because we're updating. We should be updating at 60 frames a second. So I don't think that that delta value should be too crazy. Apparently it is, so what do I know? Um, derivative previous value equals value. Return the result, however. Okay. Hmm. Yep. I mean, we're not getting, we're really not getting much useful out of this. Just getting the same values over and over. Okay. Well, that's not going to work. So I guess what we could do is we can call we can call control system derivative on player, we are going to quickly create a new value here. We throw a throw away value, so we'll just call it temp for now. Physics torque. We can then proceed to toss in that value and then ignore it. We don't need it after we're done. And we're just going to read out the result here. Whoa. Oh. We're only returning one value. So. And derivative. Yeah, why not? Okay. Oops, still not enough. Only have two variables passing in. Oh. <laughs> we need the frame time. There we go. Okay. Now what information are we getting? Zero. Nothing but zero. My guess is because values are just so close. Um, it's facing physics torque. Torque should be changing. Hmm.
well. Not sure what to do in that case. So we have a value, and then there's the cross product of those two, and that changes. We know that. But the physics, the torque. Oh, psh, duh. Um, we need. Well, I say that. No, because we're getting on the result. So. Oh, but we do have an issue here. Uh -huh. eh. So the problem here is that we need physics torque way out here. We need to set the temp at that point. Because the problem is by this time, torque has already been set to whatever the new value is. Okay. Hopefully, hey, there we go. We get some interesting values. Okay. So, these values do differ, which is good. Hmm. Gonna get anything if we set we just set that to one. Still get something crazy. Why are the values so high though? My question. Um I mean the the set point, the error of these values shouldn't be that high. Because it's, I mean, it's the set point minus process variable. Yeah. So it's just zero minus whatever cross product we get out of this. And. The cross product between those two shouldn't be that crazy. I'm not sure. When we get the error, we just subtract one from the other, which is the proportional value. And then we just multiply that error by the gain, which is one at the moment. We've already seen the cross product. I mean, that's working correctly. We're getting we go from one to negative one, and that's it. So that's fine. Um, maybe it's because torque is set to something weird. Does torque not get cleared out correctly? Go up to the physics code. Um, D physics, D max speed body. That does zero. Nope. Hmm. Well, I was kind of hoping that the, uh, well, maybe it was filled with garbage values at the beginning, so, um, that's all we yeah. have. Draw all first, here we go. Okay. 
All right, well, what else do we have then? It's returning the derivative value, which is being is returning something crazy. Is that actually what it should be returning though? The result is value minus the previous value. And those should be different. Divided by the frame time. Which I mean if the frame time is small you could get large values, but I feel like I mean, I wouldn't think so, but maybe after we've done all that, the frame timing has gotten so things have sped up so much that it's uh, it's throwing our calculations off. Which would be really weird. <laughs> I wouldn't think that it would have that much of an impact, but maybe it does. I guess. What's the frame time? Let us see what the frame time is. Frame time is 1 60th of a second. But, I mean, that's what we expect. So again, like... Okay, I'm not sure what's going on here. Don't know. Do the error value as well. Just introspect all the things, not projectile proportion. There we go. Uh, zero, zero, and we'll do the cross product. At this point, I feel like we should go ahead and just have a cross product for the time being. Physics. Facing, not facting. I don't know why I keep doing that. I'd probably just toss it in here, to be fair. Okay. So cross, and then that's it. Cross. Okay. So we can see both the error and the derivative value. See which one's crazy. So it's it's the derivative value is the one that's coming up with some crazy values. Yeah, it is based on the time. Man. I don't know if I like that or not. That means hmm. That means our damping value is going to need to be proportional to our frame time. Or inversely proportional at the same time? One of those. Um, hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, I guess the easiest thing to do is just lower the time. Or not the time, lower the the damping value to a really small amount. So that seems to work pretty well, other than torque stays low, the derivative is still really high. Well, that might be because I'm. I don't know. Pretty working fine. Oh. Pfft. Okay, so we're not. We're not multiplying these by the gain values. That's why. All right then. So this would actually be times 0 0.1. But we get, I mean, we get values that are somewhere. So the thing that's throwing me off is that the the gain 
The derivative value doesn't seem to actually be damping anything, which I find strange. Hmm. Mm -hmm. okay, bumping this up isn't going to do much. I don't think anyway. I mean, ideally, what you would want to have happen is it would it would rotate back and forth, but it would slow down until it reaches a point, which I don't think it's doing, or if it is, it's doing it very slowly. Yeah, I can't tell. Okay. So maybe a negative derivative value? Oh, maybe it's, maybe all of this stuff is getting boosted and that's the problem. Mm, no. No, that is not the problem. <laughs> okay. Well, hmm. The process variable and the previous process variable are just pretty far apart. So, How far apart are they, actually? Because we're doing, I mean, we're doing the cross product here. So how much are they off? It didn't look like they were too far off. Maybe they are. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is I'm going to put cross and temp and see what values I get out. And I'm not going to change the print statement because I don't, I don't care that much. I'm going to figure out what's going on here. The derivative is always zero. Always zero. The derivative is always zero, then dividing it by the time should produce zero. <laughs> um, but it's not, so it must be a very small value. Or, I don't know, there's the process, process values variables essentially, so I don't call that. All right, well, I don't change temp each time. So I need to do that, then set physics torque to be whatever temp was. Okay. Or I could just use physics torque, I guess. Probably makes more sense. All right, so what are the differences that we're getting? 870, 870, 890. Um, the same problem, or same issues that we had before. This. Hey. But that doesn't make any sense. Physics torque starts out at zero every frame. Hmm. Do we zero that out somewhere? Um, uh, I don't need to do that.
There we go. This is the only place that we use physics dork. Okay then. So confused now. Why? I don't know what's going on. Hmm. So, the problem is, I think, we set temp to be equal to physics torque, whatever that value happens to be. We change physics torque based on whatever the cross product is. Now, I guess for whatever reason, this is only ever zero because the derivative value down here, that temp value is always zero, but the cross product changes. If the cross product changes, then, uh, but the error doesn't have anything to do with the processor. Well, no, that shouldn't matter. The error changes. The cross product changes. But for whatever reason, the torque value doesn't change. So, not sure what's going on then. Hmm. I mean, we can't use physics torque here because they're just, it's going to be the same every time. We could do that. And then we could just toss physics torque right here. Uh, except we don't know what torque is. Well, we could do. We could do this and say instead of torque, we'll do cross. That should be fine. Uh, I don't know, torque value. Yeah, whatever. We don't need it. Hmm. Game, why you no work? Yeah, the torque value just doesn't, it either doesn't get set correctly, or, well, it doesn't get set, it doesn't get set correctly, or it gets reset, are kind of the only possibilities here, because it's always zero. Unless it's just a really small value, which, I mean... I don't need another frame time anymore. I can just do that and see if it's at all different. No. Just straight up zero. But the other value does change. Okay. So something's going on. It's just not what we want. The physics torque is only ever called here. Okay. This... A dummy. So, we are passing in a copy of the physics object, which means that this value is new every time, essentially. So we need that. We need a pointer to the physics object. I mean, I guess the other option, if you really wanted to get into it, is you could say, all right, instead of getting 
physics object, we need the center position, we need the angle, we need a pointer to the previous torque. Or you just, you just call it torque, I guess. And then to apply all these values to. Mm -hmm. Well, eventually we might pull all that out. I don't think we're going to do that right now, though. So we'll just leave it as is, other than the change to make entity physics a pointer. Okay, so we go through and select all of these. Uh, not that one. Fix it like so. And then we get to go down here and say, whoop, oh no, actually that needs to be, that needs to be a reference to that object. But if we're gonna do that, we might as well and by what might as well, I mean we kind of have to have that be a pointer, because otherwise we're just going to have the same issue, but a step back. So there we go. Except we're going to have to change a bunch of this stuff now too, don't we? Yeah. Okay. Having done all of that... That looks more like what I would expect. Likewise, likewise, it slows down. Okay, so that looks like that was the problem. Okay, so if we jump back up here, that means ideally we can just change that back to 8 and 8, and everything will start working again. Hey! Fantastic. We can fly around. We can we can just barely boost with our retro boosters, which is good because that's kind of what I want in the game. I want the retro boosters. The retro boosters and the side boosters are they're not there to slow you down. I guess they are there to slow you down, but they're not like they're not your main booster. Your main booster is, you know, the the giant booster that you have on the back. And those are just kind of maneuvering thrusters, really. I don't know if I'll keep it like that. Obviously, the cool part about having all of these things... Uh, turn! Turn! It is kind of weird having to like, control direction with both sticks. I will say that. I don't I don't automatically dislike it, but I don't know. It's weird and kind of quirky and I sort of like it in a way, but I don't know if I'm going to keep it. It'll probably come down to other people playing the game, but I don't know. I don't know yet. Anyway, everything shows up correctly and we can fly around again. So that's good. Which means, I think now is a good time to go ahead and commit some of this stuff. So what are all the files? We have a lot of files. All right, atscppn.h. Um, changed data to change entities to struct of arrays. Really good to say SO8 format. There we go. Likewise here. That is not ATS. That is ATS. There we go. 
changed entities to SOA format. Okay. Um, status changed AI. Okay. We didn't change the dot H. We did change the CPP though. Mostly we commented out a bunch of stuff or disabled a bunch of stuff. Mm. Do we want to leave that? I guess we could leave that. For now. Now, you know what? We're going to go ahead and commit all of this because it's working. So. Disabled non working code. And then. Control.cpp. Mech.hpp. Right. Okay, here. That's the dot h. Never mind. We changed. Oh. We changed that one. Okay, we don't want to save that one because we actually want to delete it. So. Hey, there we go. Uh, Control.cpp. Delete file. Okay. Now we do status troll. That is correct. ATS mech, which would be over here. We haven't really done much with this, so I'm going to leave it. We haven't, haven't gotten any of that working yet. I haven't touched that out. Um, Physics.cpp. We did change that quite a bit. What did we change? Basically pushed all of those value, or all of the functions into data. Into the data structure. Moved functions into the data structure. Physics data structure. There we go. Okay. Physics.h. We'll probably toss that. Physics.h, there we go. Just have to rename some of those. Um, or changed function declarations to match CPP file. <coughs> okay. What do we have left? Render. World and world. Okay. Render dot each. Didn't add anything to CP or to dot each yet. We kinda need to though. Alright, so void push fixtures. Data render picture start transform back to center game color. All right. B2 fixture. Really? Oops, I didn't spell it wrong, I don't think. Uh, was it not? Was it not loaded in before then? B and renderer. That shows up in the physics. I bet if I move physics up, we have issues. 
Render is not a class or namespace in, in physics. Dang it. All right, well. There we go. I figured out where it used to be. All right, B2 fixture doesn't exist. Cannot open include file ATS control dot CPP. Uh, hmm. I don't really want to forward declare this. So I guess I can just leave this out of there for now. Not thrilled with it, but I can live with it for the time being. Only to fix it at some point though. Uh, that doesn't exist anymore, so that can just go away. Yeah. Now we change it again. Crap. Oh well. Okay, so this we can did. Push fixtures function and then world. I don't need to see the diff, thanks. Update doesn't currently do anything. In fact, I don't even think we need it at the moment. So there we go. And now, and now it hasn't changed. Okay, well we can just toss that out then. And now we can do world.h though. This one has changed. Um, again, we don't need an update function, so that's fine. We have add, and we don't have draw because I got rid of that. We do have initialize though. Um, before I do that, I should probably make sure that this files. Okay. All right. So added portal struct. Um. Portal color table and and add function. Not super descriptive, but it gets the job done. Okay. And last thing for now, control is deleted. We have ats.cpp. And that's just because we got rid of some stuff. So that should be good for now. Okay. So having done all that, what is next? There were, there were a couple of things that weren't working still. That I would kind of like to have working. So maybe we should start at how we want to do that. So we need AI and then the mining beam. I think we'll start with the mining beam because that's probably going to be the biggest issue. Okay, we pass in the entity ID. Then all of this stuff. can just do that. Resources, we don't need to 
the reference stock. There we go. Do we really need to do all this if we're going to use the mining beam though? Mm hmm. So ideally, what would we what would we like to have happen? Instead of doing it this way, I go ahead and comment these out right all over again. Should all go away. There we go. Okay. So when we're com when we're updating the player, how do we want this to work? Ideally, controller is valid. Well, so here's the first thing. Ideally, we wouldn't have the controller if it wasn't valid. So for instance, right here, just have an array of controllers. That should actually be maybe a sparse array. I don't think so. I think we just want a hmm. I mean, we could really just do a we could do a fixed array, I suppose, or a sparse array. Either one would work. We'll do a fixed array for now. So controller data. And we're going to have. Num controllers called controllers. So there's that. And then what we would like to do here is in the platform based code, he notes. Oh, right. Okay. From the platform code, what we would like to have happen is if we detect a controller input like being plugged in or activated, then we would add a new controller to the input array over here. And then if we unplug one, it should get removed. So If that's the case, let's see. We have we have an array down here somewhere. It's the input. There we go. So there we go. So if an entity has a controller or should be controlled by a controller, it'll have an entry in this table. So ideally, what we would like to happen is in the platform code, it will tell our game engine, hey, this is an event that occurred. And the event is that someone plugged in a controller. And then if that happens, would we want, see, I don't think we would want an entry here. What we would want is, I mean, that's basically what we're already doing. What we would want is to have an input ID into this array. So, and that ID wouldn't be there unless it was valid. So perhaps, hmm. Perhaps we want a sparse array here. And we can just add va values. Values. We can add variables. I think I'm getting I'm getting too wrapped up in my own thoughts. All right. So let's go through this step by step. Let's just let's just do the work and see what falls out. So, as we are processing events, 
we are going through each of the each of the controllers, hitting all of the states. Um, we just set the controller to be false, is valid to false, and then if if we can get the state, then we are setting it to success. So I mean, supposedly we have hot swapping. Hot swapping. We should be able to start, for instance, without this plugged in, supposedly. Everyone just sits there and then, I guess, assuming that I get the correct ID, I plug this the controller in and then it works. I mean, it, that, it does, so there's that. So that's good. Um... Okay, so here's the thing. We need Damn. I'm really, really rethinking how I need to do the whole program, <laughs> which is not necessarily a bad thing, but I may have to get rid of this platform section, sort of. Or maybe I'm, I'll just need to take all of this information and instead of processing it here, just hand it to the game to process, which may be what ends up happening. So the idea here is that if, if this check fails while we're processing events, instead of setting it to be true or false, really what we would like to do is just add it to a table, so just add it to this array. If it's, if it's a success, we just add it to that array. If it fails, then we would remove it from here. And then since we also know that entity input is an array of controller IDs, of input IDs, we would then also go through that array and remove any of the invalid IDs, any, any pairs that have that invalid ID. We could just remove them. So that also works. But anyway, I don't know. A long rabbit hole to go down to, and I don't even know if we need to do it right now. We probably don't to be honest. Um, I may just leave this as a normal array for the time being. I don't know if I want to mess with that right now. But part of, part of optimizing all of this, and really all of this optimization comes down to Essentially what I'm doing is reworking all of my code and all of the data in my program to be more data oriented. Which is useful not just for optimization, it's useful for other things as well, but that is the design goal. And part of that is getting rid of all of these if statements and branches and things like that. So, yeah. Hmm. Anyway. How about we go back to what we were originally going to do? which is using the mining beam. <laughs> in order to use the mining beam, and in fact, we can just do it right here for now. 
before we split it off and do its own thing. So, when we press the trigger, what do we want to have happen? We would like... We need to create a scanning area. within the physics system we need to point the scanning area in the direction we direction we're facing which is true yeah that makes sense okay We need to check for any collisions that occur with the scanning area. And what do we do? What will we do with that? We actually don't need to check. We don't necessarily need to do this step because this will be handled elsewhere. So really, we just need to do those two. Create a scanning area within the physics system, point the scanning area in the direction we are facing, and then we'll need to delete the scanning area once we have finished checking it. We'll need to add that to a buffer somewhere. Add scanning area to a deletion buffer, I guess. I mean, or we could create it and keep it around would be another thing that we could do. And just deactivate it whenever the trigger comes on and off. I don't know if we want to do it that way, though. I mean, we could. I guess it's not terrible. We just have to reorient it. I don't know. Um, let's see. If we were going to do it that way, we would create a scanning area up here whenever we get a new mech, and then we would only enable it when the trigger is held. So, to do all of that, what do we need to do here? Go down to the bottom, and then we can do something. We will do e2 vec2 um, scanning points equal the three scanning points, which are going to be vec2 0 0, and then we need two other values which will be some distance plus to the left and right. I have somewhere here, we have center, and then we have forward and side. Which are those two values. And jump back up here, there we go. And just toss those right there. B2 forward, B2 side. I don't know about that. We may we may get rid of this. Beam direction. We don't have a beam direction yet. And I want this to be 
Well, we're probably going to want this to be another body, another physics body. Or now, we're going, we'll have to change all of this. And in fact, hmm, in fact, this will be a part, this won't even be a part of the actual physics component. It will be part of, part of the mech component. I already have I already have there. So I've called it scanner. Okay. Alright, so we have the center point. And then we have we have forward by a certain distance, which is going to be zero and then wrapping this counterclockwise we we'll want negative positive well okay <laughs> we'll want a positive x value and then a negative x value the y value is not going to change so this will be mech mining distance int mech mining distance again and then the side value is times the mining size. So we have positive mining size and negative mining size. And in fact, we may not even need to keep track of these. Since so mining distance, mining size, we can keep them there. We don't, we may not need them here. Possibly. So we can just do mining size, mining distance. Mining size and mining distance like that. And then possibly we can just get rid of them there. It looks like it still works. Okay, so we have those points. Now what we want to do is set up body. That just sets the position. We get that, we need a shape, fixture definition, definition.shape equals, oh, we need a shape first. Polygon shape, shape, shape.set. We will set it with scanning points and an array of size. Scanning points like so. We don't need a reference to a pointer. Density can be zero, and in fact, uh, I'm gonna have to pull up box 2D documentation again. Dang it! Box 2D physics engine for game. Documentation manual. Okay. So we need to know in the fixtures, fixture has shape and density. Do we set the trigger value here though? Sensor. Maybe. You can flag any fixture as being a sensor. Yes. Okay. You do that by something. Good job. So there's a way to do that. It does not have that way to do that thing in the manual. So we get to go look at the source code. By look at the source code, I mean pull up the source code because I have Box2D on my computer, otherwise I wouldn't be able to use it. 
Uh, Fixture.h is probably good. Sensor, set sensor. That seems pretty good. Um, although we may want to do that in fixture def. Yeah. Okay. Def is sensor equals true. There we go. Then we call int mech maybe. Uh, we don't set that though. Alright, well, we just call it mech actually. That makes things a little easier, I guess. Mech.scanner. What it's called, right? Scanner. Um, create fixture with that definition. There we go. And then up here we also need to do to mech, we do a bunch of stuff. And lastly, mech.scanner equals game data physics data dot setup body at that position. And it's not a bullet. Is that right? Do I want, do I want to make sure that it's not a bullet? Setup body is bullet. Uh, yeah, that should be fine. Like, I mean, it, it can move fast, but you're also probably going to be you're going to hold the scanner on objects, so it should be okay. So, having done that, now. When we get down here, actually going to need to check if mech.scanner exists. Do this stuff. Uh, we have an issue here though. Boo. Because we need to check. We will want to check if both of these exist, like that, and if not, we don't want to do any of that. And the problem is, if we build one but not the other, we need to get rid of the one that we have before we get rid of, before we clear stuff. So, I guess what we can do here is say, if physics body, hmm. We've created the body. If the oh, it's probably easier if we just toss all of this in here. So if we have the body, then we want to try and create the scanner. If Well, we could say we need both of them. So we'll do both of them. If we have both values, then we will attempt to actually create the scanner fixture. So, and that still doesn't solve the problem that we were running into. 
Hmm. So it'll probably come back to bite us, but I'm going to leave it like that for now. Missing semicolon after shape, that is true. Okay. That worked. Now what to do? We had the scanning points, we created the scanning area, which is basically just a triangle that points out from wherever you're facing, or it should. Anyway, we create the fixture, so that should attach the actual shape to the physics object. It's a sensor, so it shouldn't collide. When it collides, it shouldn't create physical interactions, but it should still trigger a collision. We do all that, which is what we want, and there's a, there's a physics body enable somewhere. It's a fixture enable. Come on. Enable. Awake. Maybe it's awake? Actually awake or sleeping. No. Active. There we go. That's what we want. Okay. So in update player, down here, we go to right here. And what do we want to do? We want to say... If this is true, we're going to do game data. Probably already got the mech somewhere else. Yes. Okay. Mech scanner active equals true. Likewise, if we're outside of here. We want that to be false, so we're just going to always set it false, and then we have to be, if we happen to be pressing that value, we will turn it on. That should work fine. So obviously it doesn't. Uh, it's true, it's a pointer. C++ wants, you to make sure, wants to make sure that you use arrows. Active is not a member of body. No, probably have to do set active. Because Box2D likes its objects. Set active. Better? Okay. Okay. It's all good. So, because of how we've already beaded it, we don't need to do that. We do need to point the scanning area in the direction we are facing, however. So, what we need to do, um, I guess what we could do is set a fixed rotation, and then handle, or we could set the body type differently. Static, zero mass, zero velocity, maybe manually move. Zero mass, non-zero velocity, set by user, moved by solver. Dynamic. But it's not a dynamic, it's not a kin kinematic, it should be a static body. Now, does that happen? I don't know. Is OBS acting funny? No, oh, not too bad. Okay. Looked over at the stream and it had a big, it had a big play button on it, which is not what I want. <laughs> not ideal. Anyway, we have Box2D up here. Let's check out fixture.h once again. And we need... We need fixed rotation. Or just rotation in general. No? Okay. So that's just a part of the body. So body type... Alright. I guess we will go to... We will go to get mech. There we go. 
and I need to look at physics. Setup body is just always going to be a dynamic body. Well, hmm. Ideally, I would like to change that before we get to this point. So, I really don't want to uh, just slowly pulling everything out of Box2D and just exposing it all over the place. It's not really what I want to do. I mean, I guess one option is to say, I'll just create another one. Data setup. I guess it'd be kinematic body. What kind of body are we going for here? Huh. No code, please. There we go. Yep. What happens when you when you code for too long? When you're tired, especially. Things just fade away from your mind. All right, kinematic, zero mass, good. Non-zero velocity, not as good. Static, zero mass, zero velocity, maybe manually moved. Do we have to manu manually move? That I don't know. I mean, ideally, no. I was gonna say, ideally, we would want this to just be a fixture on the main mech's body, but I don't think that's the case. I think we actually do want this to be a separate body. So, we will, I guess we can call set something, set body type. Surely that's a function, right? No, it is not. Set type. Set type is a function. Okay. All right. So we create it. Scanner. Set type, and we're going to set this to be a static body. So having done that. That means, hopefully, it will move with. I'm going to do this. I guess, since we've done that, when we're updating next, just to say somewhere, update player, update screen, update and render. Hmm. Update the AI. We update the player. Update the physics. And hmm. I don't know if I don't think the physics are going to set this correctly. What we can do here is we're going through the all of, or we're going through the array of physics entities and we're getting the position out of them. So what we could do is just pull those out and we're setting it in the entity position for all of this other stuff. We can just go ahead and set game data entity mech. ID and actually we're gonna have to check to see if it contains anything. Contains ID. But first, see if it even exists, and if it does exist, then we're going to pull up the mech and set the scanner 
position to be it body get position like so maybe scanner okay well that's true it is spelled scanner set position is not a member of b2body really Oh, box 2D, why you do this? Get local point, get local vectors, get world point. Uh, position. You can only get the position. Get transform type. Position angle math. Not get set. Transforms at type. Bullet awake. Linear and angular velocity, mass data, damping, gravity scale, sleep and loud, fixed rotation, user data. Uh, really? Box to dy. Set the position of the body's origin and rotation. Manipulating a body's transform may cause non physical behavior. Okay. However, when we call get position, we do get a reference to the vector, though. So technically, we should be able to say get position and then set it equal to the other body. Dang it. Or not. Setup is not a member of physics data. Um, oh, yeah, it'd be useful if I didn't have random bits of code lying around. No operator found which takes the left hand operator type const vector. T well, so much for that idea. Is it right there, too? Uh, well, dang it all! We can't modify it. Although I say that, hmm, maybe, maybe we can do it this way, and just instead of modifying the actual variable, modify the values in the variable, which does the same thing. Cannot assign to a variable that is const. Come on. <sighs> this is incredibly frustrating. Box2D, you make this really difficult, and it's kind of annoying. Well, I mean, the simplest thing to do would be to just make my own function here. I'm going to mess with the source code for someone else's library. Mm. All right. No? Is it? I guess it's in here. Get position. Okay. Really? It's just the transform? Okay. Well, in that case, do you, you do have a set transform. Why? The most convoluted way of doing things. Entity. Mech. Get that ID. Get the scanner. Call set transform, and I want you to give it the position of the other body. Get position with the angle of the other body. Is that right? Do I want to give it the same angle? I think I do. Yeah, that sounds right. 
There we go. That is done. Good. Good. It works. Maybe. I don't care. We're going to go over here. We set it to be active. We don't need to point it in the direction that we're facing because we already do that. We don't need to add it to a deletion buffer because we're not deleting it. We just turn it off. So there you go. That is the entirety of our scanner code. Supposedly. Except that we have to render it. Oh. Update screen. So, if you're a mech, we may need to update the scanner. Hmm. Okay. So we can do that by saying int mech scanner get active. That's no. I can set active, but I can't get active. It's called is active. Naming conventions, man. Oh, but it's a boolean, so clearly it needs to be a different function name, right? Okay, anyway, if it's active, then go ahead and push the fixtures for that. Game data, render data, int mech scanner get fixture list. Int mech, not body scanner. Scanner get transform. Int mech scanner get position. And then we set it with a specific color. That color should be based off of what? Hmm. Technically, that color should be based off of whether or not it's colliding with something. Yep. <laughs> All right, well maybe, as a workaround, because I don't feel like doing this right now, we can say get user data. That'll work, right? Surely. Okay, good, we can call get user data. Fantastic. Now, in order to actually do anything with it, it's a void pointer, so we're going to have to cast it, one, and we're going to cast it to, we're going to cast it to a color, because that's what we're going to pass in. A color, no, a color. Color pointer, because sure, why not? I like causing cache misses every time we render things. And then we're going to do this. And that should compile, but it will not work. Because we're not actually setting the color anywhere. So we need to do that. So up here, you know, I just realized that we're doing an awful lot of assuming that scanner exists. That's not the greatest idea. We may need to fix that. Anyway, ignoring that problem for now, we are going to say mech scanner user data set user data. And I think we can actually do this in the definition. User data is going to equal what is it going to equal? Scanner color? Sounds about right. Sure. Game color scanner color table. And the entries consist of red and yellow. Red, green, and yellow. 
So we have R, which is going to be red. Also, that will mean offline or something like that. Unavailable? What is the word that I'm thinking of? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> moving on, we have red, we have green, which is found, found a mineable. It's like this is minable. Um, how do you spell mineable? Mineable? Yeah, it looks good. Dashes. Can't go wrong with dashes. Okay. And then we have R and G, which should give us a yellow color. And that will be... That will be... Online... Or... Mineable not found. So here we can say mineable found. And here we can say, I guess technically both of these are online, and this is offline. So if for whatever reason the mining beam or scanner, mining scanner thing is not working, then we will use that. We have a syntax error somewhere. All right. Okay. Okay. Scanner color table, and we are going to use two. Should probably order reorder those. Default value is going to be the yellow one, so that we'll use that. And is that okay? Do I need to? I can just do that, right? Pass in a pointer. Okay. Uh, scanner? No. Of course not. Why would they make it easy? So yellow goes first, then green, then red. There we go. Alright. So having done all that, now we get to jump over to the physics system, because why not? And in the physics system, we need we need to check the collision listener. So when we begin the contact, we need to check the user data of said contact and get some sort of ID that lets us know what the heck we're dealing with. Yeah. Well, crap. So we need some way, we're gonna have to have some sort of tag to know what we're using or what, what we even want to do in the physics step. I guess everything should be cleared out. I think. So really, for the time being, we should just be able to assume that these are colors. Assume one of these are colors anyway. And then color, color. Except we should probably call those colors. What am I going to do here? What I'm going to do here is say we want the max of these two values. And the reason I say that, although that's probably not going to work because Matt is expecting numbers, 
Yeah, floating points. Um, that should be okay. Should be able to do. Hmm. We should be able to dereference these. Oh, that's probably not going to help too much. Cannot convert from float to game color. Right, so we pass in the values, and it's somehow going to think that those color values are numbers. Which is true, it actually should, because it's just an alias for an integer. That should be okay. <clears throat> so the real magic here is whether or not we can go back. So if we do that, we should get that. Thus, uh, this isn't going to work either, I don't think. Or maybe, no, actually it will, never mind. Okay, so we do that, except for crud. Um, what I want here is not only do I need the color, but I also need the body. And there's not an easy way for me to get that also. So I can do this, what I'm trying to do is get is run this without doing any um, any branches, any conditional statements. But it may not matter. I don't know how often we're going to be running this collision routine, so we can maybe ignore this. I'm trying to get this to work really well. So instead, we can say color A, duplicate all this with color B, get fixture B. All right, I'll do this the slow way. If color A, now hopefully, Scanners should not be able to collide with each other. I think. I don't think scanners can collide with each other. But I don't know that. Maybe I should maybe I should look that up in the manual. Of the manual. Manual that misses it missing a bunch of information. Uh, box 2D. Yep. 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 Documentation manual. We need to go to. Supposedly it's in the fixtures section. PDF's taking a long time to load. We reaper voice from my cup. There we go. Fixture creation. Friction, restitution, filtering. Sensors. The sensor is a fixture that detects collision but does not produce a response. You can flag any fixture as being a sensor. Sensors may be static, kinematic, or dynamic. Remember that you may have multiple fixtures per body and you can have any mix of sensors and solid fixtures. Also, sensors only form contacts when at least one body is dynamic, so you will not get a contact for kinematic versus kinematic, kinematic versus static, or static versus static. Sensors do not generate contact points. There are two ways to get the state of a sensor. The contact is touching, contact listener begin contact in contact. Well, that's what I'm doing. So, okay. Maybe I should just figure out if any of this works first, then. If that's what I'm walking into. So never mind the if statements, just... just print things. 
tab color pointer a equals a pointer value color pointer b equals a different pointer value okay what did i do i missed a button okay and then we just pass in the values and see what happens assuming any of this works and let's be honest that's a big assumption as you can see right now because nothing is happening good good i didn't want anything to happen anyway all right come on bug bugger access violation reading location nothing this is true. It is generally a bad idea to read from nulls. So where, where exactly is the null? Scanner's not null. It's not from get fixture list, is it? Uh, fixture, fixture list, the fixture joint list. We shouldn't be pulling from there. Transform is somewhere. Maybe. All right. So clearly, clearly it's in intmec scanner. There we go. So transform exists. That should be fine. Fixture list. There is a fixture. So that should be fine. So get position. That doesn't make any sense. That should be okay. So what? Uh, user data is null. That's what it is. We shouldn't be doing that unless it's active. Uh, why? Why do you do this? Now it's going to take forever to stop. If I get something that pops up any minute now. There we go. Here we go away. Okay. Got the scanner. Need to set the user data. But ideally, we shouldn't render it unless there's something there. Unless it's active, which it should be. And I guess we can set active in here. Set active false. There. Now it, it should be active from the get-go. Supposedly. Supposedly. Um... Maybe... Maybe we should set the user data up here? Set user data? Uh, scanner color table zero. Okay, so we do that. I don't really need that. Well, that works. So supposedly now, I think supposedly a lot. Super slow movement. We should be able to activate a scanning beam. Nope. No beam is to be found. Well, that's sad. Makes me quite sad. <gasps> I was wrong. It is found. It's just not rendering anything. It's kind of weird. Also, the collisions for everything are null. That's great. Okay, if that's the case, then we get a contact here. 
And we should check contact is touching. Or contact listener begin contact. This is what I'm doing. We get the contact. I guess technically somewhere over here in the contact manager, perhaps. Or not. Oh, there's a folder for it. Ah. Okay. Contact. So what do we need in here? We need is touching. Is this contact touching? Okay. Would Oh boy. All right. Well, if you're not if you're going to be like that then So I guess the problem here is that according to Box2D, sensors just don't exist in the collision system proper. When these return, you may get you may get things back, but they will be they will possibly be invalid. Which is kind of frustrating. So maybe we can do well. All right. So first of all, if scanner is active, then instead of getting the user data. I'm just going to, currently, I'm just going to print, or not print, render the default color, default color for the scanner. And the other thing that I'm going to do here is, I think, I'm going to check maybe a boolean. Yeah. I want to check is is sensor A and technically is, is picture A a sensor, but whatever. Can, can I just do a B for Boolean? No? Okay. Alright then. It'll do I'll do you use an unsigned int because that's what you want me to use. Um, is a sensor? Is a a sensor? Likewise, is b a sensor? Also be unsigned, and instead of getting the colors, we are going to do contact get fixture A, and then we should be able to call his sensor. I'm I'm thinking that's allowable, unless his sensor is exclusively a body function. No. Okay. So if we run that, we go. We can turn. Whoa! Holy crap! Huh. Oh, that would be why. I forgot to set the scale. Okay. So that should be colliding. So if we exit somewhere in here. Somewhere in here or not? That's that's it. That's all of it right there. Is A a sensor? Is B a sensor? No, neither of them are sensors. Fantastic. All right. Well, first of all, let's hop over to the initialization code and scale that back down just a little bit. Just a 
just a little bit. So up here, we need to do we need to multiply that by zero point one. We need to scale both of, all of this down quite a bit. Like so. Alright. So now... Hey, there we go. That's more reasonable. Drawing on top of us, but that's fine. If we touch that, we should be getting nothing but scanning points. And so, of course, we don't. Also... We only ever get five, which is also not correct. So, because we want the sensor to be on, we want the scanner to be on. Although actually, we don't even need to pass that in. We can actually just pass this, which is great because that means we don't have to do any checks. Oh yeah. Anyway, so trigger left, which is the button that I was pulling, or pressing, that's good. If it's over 0.5, which all seems correct, then this should be set to true, otherwise it'll be set to false. That's exactly what we want. So, if it's active, if it's active, do we also need to awaken it? Hmm. Uh, contact, no. We want fixture or body. It may actually in be it may actually be in CPP in the CPP file. It is in fact in the CPP file. That's not what I wanted to do. We'll drag the CPP file in here. All right. Set active. Did quite a bit actually. Okay. The flags is active if so if we're active then return okay if flag exists if something's set then we or it with active flag to turn that on we create a bunch of proxies apparently okay contacts created the next time step okay whatever Otherwise, if flag does not exist, or if it's zero, then we and it with not active flag, or with the complement, the bitwise negation, there we go. And we destroy all proxies. We destroy the attached contacts. Okay. All right then. Oh, I see. Flag is just the boolean. Okay. So if if it's set to enable, then you enable it. If it's set to disable, then you disable it. Okay, that makes sense. If it's set to active, so if that's the same, then you just return. All right. Well, that doesn't seem to help too much. Honestly, or it doesn't seem to be doing what we want it to be. So what is the problem here? Um, neither of them are sensors. Yeah. 
get a bunch of collisions at first, and I'm wondering if that's just because it sets it up in the beginning, and then it gets turned off by set active false. Um, hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to have to continue digging through this to figure out what's going on. But I think that's going to do it for tonight's stream. I'm pretty tired. I don't feel like I'm making much progress at this point. So I'm going to call it here. However, having said that, I hope you found this entertaining or enjoyable or educational, even. And if you would like to see more, then you can't this week, unfortunately, because I'm going on vacation. So there will be no stream Thursday. But usually, I stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, for about two hours. Or I should, I should say at least two hours. I go over it sometimes. But, if you enjoyed this, then you know, do all the usual. Please follow, <laughs> like, and subscribe if this is on YouTube. But this is not a YouTube channel, so you don't have to worry about that. But anyway, go ahead and click the follow button if you thought this was enter entertaining. If you enjoyed this, I will be here, like I said, Tuesdays and Thursdays, pretty much all the time, unless I post otherwise on the Twitch feed. But other than that, hope all of you have a wonderful evening and happy programming. So I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.